MTD CNC have travelled to Stoke today and we're here to meet with Andrew Sims, who's the Managing Director of Unilave. And we're going to find out a little bit about Unilave, their machine shop, what machine tools they buy and how they manage to keep their business at the top of the game. Good afternoon, Andrew. Good afternoon. Yeah, tell us about Unilave. Where did the business start, who founded it and um, how things are at the moment? Okay, well, Unilave started uh, 35 years ago. Uh, my father, Eddie Sims, uh, founded the company. Um, and quickly got a partner of Jim Martin working alongside him. Uh, they brought the, the business forward to, to where it is today. Uh, Unilay is now in the second generation with myself and my sister in the business, still alongside my father, uh, who's chairman now. Um, we've grown over the, over the last sort of 35 years into a, quite a significant subcontract CNC machining organisation, uh, serving predominantly oil and gas industry, aerospace, uh, pump and valve and then kind of industries uh, with machining solutions um, that have taken us to where we are today. And, uh, and what would you attribute to the success of the business? I mean, I, from, a, from a former life, I remember, I think you've moved within the last five years, every five or six years. Yeah, I think the company's always had a driven approach to what it's been doing and a unique sort of we make it happen philosophy. Um, I think that coupled with um, really forging good relationships with the customers and good partnerships with the customers enabled us to, uh, to start originally down in Burslem um, at the original site. In 2006, we moved to this premises, which gives us three times effectively more space. Uh, and the company's grown its capacity and, 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 and evolved from there, really, in the same format it was before. I mean, from walking around the machine shop, it's very evident that you're not scared to invest. I mean, millions and millions and millions of pounds looks like you've invested. Uh, yeah, in the I th yeah, I think that's right. And that's been a, the, the focus point and the strategy all the way through, really, from starting with the first CNC machine tools, maybe back in 1990, 92. Uh, I think the conversion of, of Unilave then from an open style machine shop um, into CNC uh, sort of paved the way for the success it is today. Um, and the investment around that's just continued quite strongly as it's moved on. Uh, and I think you're right in saying uh, Unilay's never been frightened of investing uh, in machine tools for a specific customer or specific market sector. Um, and that's grown from small bar feeding, CNC turning, six, eight inch chucking um, way back when. Uh, up to now today, you'll see around the factory, there's some five axis machining with Mazak Integrex. Uh, large vertical boring capacity uh, and large machining centre capacity as well. Yeah, I noted from walking around the Integrex machine, which is obviously a multitasking, yeah. multi-axis, it looks like a 25-inch chuck machine with a B-axis head. Looks like you've got a lot of capacity there and a lot of capability. Yeah, that machine's obviously the E500. We've got uh, three metres between centres on that machine, uh, capable of swinging 520 mil in diameter. Uh, obviously full five axis capability um, and yeah that's given us a real edge in terms of the technological advances with machine tools. So we touched on Mazak, other machinery suppliers that you've invested in over the, over the past decade? Yeah I think um, if, if I go back to, to maybe the 2000s we were quite heavily into the Japanese machines i.e. Morisiki uh, and them time for machine tools. I think as, as the company's moved on we've certainly got the Mazak Integrex we've touched on in terms of five axis machine tools, we've recently purchased a WFL MT65. Um, alongside that, we work closely with Dusan, uh, with Honor on the vertical turning, which is which is quite a sector uh, that you'll see that we that we work with in terms of range of capacity. Um, I mean, that's quite a spread, and I think in, in in some ways it's it's often quite different to other engineering companies. You'll often go into an engineering company and they'll have all of the same yeah. brand of machine yeah. Yeah. but here it seems like it's completely the reverse uh, yeah. which in some ways I suppose you buy a machine that is is the right machine at yeah. the right time for that job yes yeah I think that's right um, in reality we are we are looking for the diversity of a machine tool so that it's capable of performing the the functions in a subcontract sense so when we look at a machine tool we don't necessarily look at it being entirely job specific or part specific we would look at the machine tools capabilities and capacity so that it would either serve the industry that we're initially looking in or then it would would create the position to to, 
to switch that capacity over to uh, to other industries um, that that would utilise them capacities. And with that, obviously, that come the, the, there comes a broad range of uh, of machine tool manufacturers and, and and makes that we that we have to look at. Because I noticed with the Honor vertical lathe, that machine is quite a recent purchase as well. Yes, the Honor the VL VTL. Um, that's been a recent purchase, sort of eight months ago. Um, we've got quite an uh, extensive range of capacity on vertical turning um, from sort of 200 mil chucking uh, right up to big vertical boring capacity at two metres. Um, we've got eight machine tools that sort of fit into the 550 stroke metre size. Um, a couple of them have been Morisikis. Um, and yes, when we were looking at upgrading them machines and moving us to the next stage, uh, we've been working with DTS uh, locally to us um, and looking at the Honor as a brand. And it's certainly with the, with the power and rigidity of the machine uh, seems to be a, a, a path that we've gone down and has been very successful. Because I can, I can imagine from my experience in selling machine tools, if you found out that a company like yours was looking to buy a machine, yeah. you know, you'd have had every possible machine tool supplier through the door. What made DTS different? Why did you buy the Honor? I think the reality is you know, you've got to look at things in terms of being competitive with machine tools that you buy as well as being competitive with the parts that you're producing on them. Um, and I think the access uh, through DTS that gave us to Honor by going direct to the manufacturer certainly led the way uh, commercially in making that decision. I think by the same token, Honor could back that up with the reliability, the service, um, and the machine tool quality to support that. So it made perfect sense to, to, go that, to go that way. And as a business, you obviously project and you look forward. We've just started 2014. What does the year ahead look like? What's going to happen? What about 2015? What are the plans that you make? Yeah, I think certainly, um, we've, as always, we've got sort of grand plans to move forward. Uh, the climate certainly over the last 12 months has been challenging. Uh, I think we've come into 2014 and started after a, after a slowish start, uh, things have picked up, and yeah, the demand seems to be a lot a lot better and, and certainly a lot more buoyant. Um, I think again, there's still there's still some uncertainty around. By the same token, I think there's a lot of positivity around manufacturing, and I think it's uh, it's time for us all to to get on with what we do and um, and try and realise that. And I think certainly, uh, you look at some of the projections then through 2015, 16. Uh, and yes, I think we're in the right place. Uh, things are certainly sounding good. Um, I think it's a period of time now that we need to, to really consolidate our efforts, our machine tool capacity, hone in on them efficiencies and put ourselves in a good position to move forward with a, with a buoyant climate, hopefully. And, and when you do look to invest and when you do look to, you know, what are new technologies, what sort of resources do you use? Publications? use the MTD website, do you visit shows? Yeah, I think really, obviously, we use the MTD website um, as an initial resource. I think that's very useful to us, certainly for our manufacturing director, it's his first point of call. Uh, we back that up then with, with visits to um, the machine tool exhibitions. We've got Mac in the UK, uh, obviously the big machine tool exhibitions in Germany that we've attended. Uh, so yeah, we sort of use all them resources um, to, uh, yeah, to do a homework and, uh, and make them vital decisions. So all in all, looking forward to the year ahead? Yeah, definitely. I think it's exciting. There's, uh, there's a little bit of stuff to get our teeth into now. A um, bit of development work to do in Unilathe. We've certainly got a, a two to five year plan that, that needs executing now. So yeah, really looking forward to, uh, to, to making that happen. So there we have it. Unilathe seems to have found a real niche in medium to heavy machining. As it says on their website, they make it happen.